how I studied to memorize amino acids in 30 minutes, cramming edition. I wanna start off this video by saying that this video is not meant to teach you the amino acids. The purpose of this video is to give you three simple yet highly effective ways to learn them. And as the title says, within about 30 minutes. Now this really does depend on how fast you're working and intensity, but for me, I had to recently learn the amino acids and this is what I did to cram for them right before the exam. And during the exam, I was able to recall all of the amino acids. Due to the techniques and things that I'm going to share in this video and it didn't take me longer than 30 minutes. So with that, let's get into it. We have a total of 20 amino acids, right? So number one is to put them into groups. We have positive, negative, polar uncharged, special cases, and hydrophobic amino acids. And for this video and the way that I was learning the amino acids, I used this chart that I'm displaying now to actually uh, view the amino acids and learn them. And so what I did is I took each group one at a time and remember how many amino acids are in each group. For example, in the positive group, we have three amino acids. In the negative group, we have two amino acids. Polar uncharged amino acids, we have four. And for special cases, we have three. And for the hydrophobic amino acids, we have a total of eight, all adding up to 20 amino acids. And what I would do is I would make like a mental map and uh, I would just make it starting from positive all the way going to hydrophobic. And so uh, in my head, I could imagine this diagram and uh, I was able to kind of use it as a reference. Because I may not remember all the specifics of each part of this diagram, but if I can at least narrow it down as far as, you know, positive, negative, and where they're located, then I'll have a better idea in my mind as to what to pick, and this will allow me to then narrow down uh, my answers. And so the reason this helps is because you're able to easily digest the material, and it's way easier to think of it as memorizing only a few amino acids from each group, as opposed to trying memorizing a whole chunk of 20 amino acids. And not only does knowing this help you with like memorizing it, but it also helps with like understanding the function of the amino acid. So number two is draw the amino acid R groups. To save some time, what I did was I would only draw the R group of the amino acid. Since all amino acids kind of follow like a similar base structure of having, you know, the alpha carbon connected to a hydrogen, as well as an um, amine group, as well as a carboxylic acid group as shown here. Now this could be protonated or deprotonated based on pH and pKa, but all you really need to know is that if the pKa is higher than the pH, then it's going to be protonated, and if the pKa is lower than the pH, then it's going to be deprotonated. So if you're able to confidently draw the amino acids R group, uh, it's guaranteed that you're gonna like be able to recognize it on an exam. So what I would do is I take one group at a time, three positively charged amino acids, memorize the name and the structure of the three. Now sometimes you can identify a structure and you know that it may be between a few of them because honestly, let's be honest, the amino acids, a lot of them sound similar to one another as far as naming goes. And if you find that you're still struggling with naming the amino acid, I would check out these videos right here. I personally found that just by uh, you know studying this diagram and uh, just drawing them out, I was able to learn the names. But for the purpose of making this video and just giving you guys as many resources as possible, you know, these are also options as well. So what I would do is I would count the carbons coming off the alpha carbon and write out the R group to see if I get it right. If I got one or a couple wrong, what I would do is I would just redo the entire group. I would keep drawing the structures over and over again until I got all three of those positively charged amino acids right. I would then repeat this process for each and every group. But something that I did do that I really felt helped me uh, cement that information into my head was doing mental killer laps. So if you guys have ever been in sports or ever just done killer laps, you know what I'm talking about, but um, it's basically where you're just starting from this point of origin and you're running a few feet, coming back to the origin, you're running a few more feet forward, coming back to the origin, you just keep going back and forth, right? But you're expanding your distance each and every time. But each time you're coming back to work from where you started. That's how I treated learning and memorizing the amino acids. So what I would do is I would go through the positively charged and I would get all three of those correct, right? And then what I would do is then I would rewrite them and make sure that I got them down and then I would move on to the negative ones. And I would, once I get the negative ones down, I would start back from the positively charged and then do that entire positively charged group they move to the negative, and then I'll start the polar uh, uncharged molecules. And as you can guess, once I get the polar uncharged, I'm returning back to the positively charged. 
This may seem like tedious and time consuming, but since we're just going to be drawing the R groups, it's not going to really be taking that much of our time. And it really helps drawing the structures because it is proven that actually drawing something out and taking notes really helps with just retaining the information since we were actually writing it instead of just like looking at a diagram. You know what I mean? And of course, while we do all this, we're going to be checking our work by looking at the amino acid diagram. And what I would do during this process is that I would time myself so that I have some like time pressure to actually like help me learn it as if you don't already have some naturally. Number three is take the amino acid quiz or quizzes. Once you feel confident that you can recall all 20 amino acids along with their charge and name, I would recommend taking the amino acid quiz from stoloff.edu. I'll put the link for this website down below, but basically they have where you can test everything about amino acids, starting from their one letter abbreviation, their name based off structure, uh, their structure based off name. This was about the extent that I did personally. I just did the drawing and I uh, really just took these quizzes um, only a few times and I really found that I could still recall these amino acids. But if you would like some like more practice or you have some more time to actually retain the amino acids, I would also check out these following iPhone apps. And I know I said that I did not use uh, any other resources, but I did check these out after my exam just to see, you know, were these actually helpful? And I found that they actually were very helpful, just like getting an introduction into amino acids as well. So these three uh, apps are gonna be free recommendations for amino acid quizzes and uh, just apps that are on the iPhone. Uh, the first one is the Amino Acid Quiz. Uh, second is the Amino Acid Academy. Number three, we have Amino Craft. And I did decide to spend a whole 99 cents on an iPhone app, so you're welcome. It is the Amino Acid Quiz and Flashcards. Links to everything that I mentioned in this video are going to be down in the description below. Thank you guys for watching my video. I hope it does help and I hope that these study techniques really do help you guys uh, memorize the amino acids. So thank you guys for watching. My name is Andres and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.